Okay, so Apple just dropped some brand new iPads and a new Apple TV. And my overall reaction to all of the releases today is sort of a bit of a head scratcher. Like, I don't really understand a lot of the choices they've made. I have some thoughts about it. But overall, I do think there are some really cool things in here today that we're gonna talk about. And we're gonna start with the Apple TV. It features a new A15 Bionic chip that we've seen in the iPhone 13 lineup now. I actually own a 2017 Apple TV 4K that houses an A10X chip, and I never found that to be too slow, and that's over five years ago. And as someone who has tested a bunch of smart TV dongles and devices you can plug into your TV, nothing has ever matched the fluidity and performance of my 2017 Apple TV 4K. I love how smooth it is, so I'm actually a little intrigued to see how an A15 Apple TV would feel. It would probably just feel more like butter. The new Apple TV 4K starts at a lower price of $129 with 64 gigs and Wi-Fi only, and you can spec up to 120 gigabytes plus ethernet for just an extra $20. Okay, let's talk about the new iPad 10. It's a brand new design in four bold colors with a 10.9 inch liquid retina display, which is identical to the current more expensive 2022 M1 iPad Air. From the onset, you would think that these are the exact same displays, but they're actually not. On Apple's website, the iPad 10 still doesn't have a fully laminated display, doesn't have any anti-reflective coating, and doesn't support P3 color. So the iPad Air display should still look marginally better than the iPad 10, but I mean, I think the average person really wouldn't care. I think the biggest gripe about the base model iPads is that they just looked old. And this new design is definitely going to win over a lot of people in my opinion. I think the coolest change though is the new 12 megapixel landscape ultra wide camera. Finally, forever if you use an iPad in landscape or used it with a magic keyboard and you were going on a video call, you would look incredibly weird and awkward and off center. It's been a complaint for years and I'm really happy to see Apple is listening and fixing that issue. Okay, but something that is really weird though is that this new horizontal camera is only coming to the cheaper iPad. It's not coming to the M2 iPad Pros, which I'm gonna be talking about later in the video. That is just like, what? Like, why? I, I feel like pro iPad users were the most vocal about wanting that selfie camera to be in a horizontal placement. I'm just not sure if mom and dad and, and grandma really cared that much about the camera being on the vertical side. Maybe it's just me, maybe they were more vocal than we were, but it would have just been awesome if all of the iPads got the horizontal camera. Okay, so now let's come back to the iPad 10. Some other new stuff is that it's gonna be coming with A14, which is actually a really good update. That was actually in an iPad Air, not too many years ago and that worked great. So love to see that there. Comes with 5G, Wi-Fi 6, USB-C, so no more lightning on a base iPad. And also it does have the new Touch ID that works exactly the same as the one on the iPad Air. Apple also dropped a new full-size Magic Keyboard Folio for the base iPad. This one attaches to a smart connector that's on the bottom of the iPad's edge, which is where all the power and data are gonna be provided from. It is detachable, which I think is really cool. And there's also a new function key row for shortcuts for everyday tasks, like adjusting volume, brightness, and more. I'm gonna be honest, I do think that the Magic Keyboard Folio does look really cool and I think that it's gonna be a great accessory for students. But what I just don't get is that the iPad 10 and the iPad Air 5, they're practically the same dimensions. It just seems like it would have made more sense to make the iPad 10 compatible with the existing Magic Keyboard, but I guess you wanna have a bit of product division in your lineup but I, I, I still find it a little strange. And also the new iPad 10 is only compatible with the generation one Apple Pencil, not the gen two, which is just a bit of a, another head scratcher for me, especially because the new iPad 10 is USB-C and the gen one Apple Pencil 
is a lightning port. But Apple does have a solution to their own problem, which is you can buy the USB-C to lightning adapter accessory to charge this pencil with the new iPad 10. Overall, even with all of the weird decision-making that went into crafting the iPad 10, I still think it's gonna be a really excellent device. It is modernized in literally every single way, and it's essentially a cheaper iPad Air 4. Remember, that device came out a couple of years ago, not too long ago, and we all raved at how great it was. And now we're getting it for even a cheaper price. Now sort of rebranded as iPad 10 with some weird quirks of not getting Apple Gen 2 support. I think that's going to be the main thing you're gonna to wanna to decide. Are you okay with not being able to charge your Apple Pencil on the side of your iPad. I know it sounds silly, but it is so convenient to snap the pencil on the side of the iPad that for me, it, it would probably be a deal breaker and I would still buy an iPad Air. But if that is of no concern to you, just buy the iPad 10. Like that thing is shaping up to be a killer device even with some of the weird decisions that they've made. Okay, now let's talk about the new M2 iPad Pro. For starters, the number one thing I think a lot of Pro users were hoping for is for the 11 inch iPad Pro to get mini LED this year. That is not happening. You still have to buy the 12.9 inch iPad Pro to get that beautiful, gorgeous display on your iPad. But what is new is Wi-Fi 6C support, the ability to capture ProRes video directly from your iPad. And they actually demoed it in a video and it did look cool, but I mean, is anyone going to do that? There's also this new Apple Pencil hover support. The pencil is now detected up to 12 millimeters above the display, allowing users to see a preview of their mark before they make it. This feature looks really cool. I'm not an artist or a drawer by any means, but a lot of iPad users are. So this is gonna be awesome for anybody picking up this iPad. And finally, these new iPads come with M2, which promises up to 15% better performance over M1 and a 10 core GPU that delivers up to 35% performance increase. If I'm being honest, I always find it a little weird to talk about performance on an iPad because I've never met anyone who has bought a base model iPad, an iPad Air, iPad Pro, or even an iPad mini and felt like their iPad was too slow. Apple's iPads are just so good and so fast already that I honestly wouldn't consider the fact that these iPad Pros have M2 in it as a factor in your buying decision. You need to think about whether or not you want Face ID, you want the new mini LED display, do you want ProMotion, like do you want uh, Magic Keyboard support? Like those are some of the things that I would actually think about because I think if you really wanna go hard on a computing device, you should just go buy a MacBook. I think that is still the same answer as it is today and looking at where Apple is going with the iPads, which is more of a a refresh and not a new direction, that even is more evidence that if you are a heavy user, still buy a MacBook, but if there's some app that exists on an iPad Pro that can do exactly everything you need to do that you could do on a computer, and those are the only apps you use, go buy an iPad Pro. Anyways, check out my iPhone 14 Pro review right there. It is an incredibly underrated device. Apple nailed it, it's an awesome video. And subscribe if you're brand new to my channel and I'll catch all of you guys in the next one. Peace.